And our stock of the day is Aristocrat Leisure. Now this comes after the Pokies manufacturer posted a net profit of over $723 million. That's almost a 17% increase driven by the performance of its games in the US, where it's got a clear focus. Its revenue climbed 6% to $3.3 billion as its market share of slot machines in North America grew to more than 40%. And Aristocrats' popularity in the US was driven by the launch of uh, the NFL-themed machines known as Bankbuster. And where's the gold jackpots? As well as demand for flagship games such as Dragon Lin and Lightning Dollar Link. And the company, it's paying a fully franked interim dividend of $0.36. Cents a share. Taking a look at the reaction on the market today, off it goes, um, up more than 10%. Conrad, what's your view? Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, especially considering that 10% uplift just today, we'd probably stick with a hold on it. Um, it's uh, it's gone through a couple of things. It's it's gone through. I mean, so more recently, it went through the, uh, you know, the cost of living increase uh, and how that affected casinos and that naturally, the underlying business. It also went through um, more recently, um, I guess their and our shareholders haven't really sort of responded too well to it, but um, they've lost um, some revenues or potential revenues um, against Light and Wonders, which they've made a claim against um, for their version of Dragon Link, which is a, a major revenue stream or, or product for them, for Aristocrat. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, we're, I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not going to sort of wait around and try to dig through the dig through the evidence. But um, you probably hold to sort of identify whether whether that ruling is in the favor of the of the company. If, if it is, great. Um, if not, I still I still think you have some some tailwinds for this company as well. Anyway, um, just with the recovery of the economy, hopefully people start gambling more. So, well, yeah. well you talk about the recovery in the economy yet. Mm. I mean, clearly, if we're looking for interest rate cuts, that's an indication that the economy is actually showing sure. weakness. Yeah, sure. We're seeing that with uh, consumer discretionary stocks. So would this business not be affected then? Yeah, but I, I guess it's about just the, the ability for these guys to be spending. I mean, yes, the economy slows down, but if you have the rate hikes and everything else, sort of falls through with that. So, um, But yeah, you know, for us at the moment, Aristocrat hasn't really been a company we've been in and out of too much. It's just been sort of something to monitor uh, if you're in it. Like I said, we'd probably just put a hold on it. We don't necessarily have too much of a conviction behind, like I said, those, whether it's even economic or, or just more importantly, the legal uh, ramifications of Dragon Link and Light and Wonders. But um, yeah, so for us, it's just mm. a hold. All right, a hold from you, Howard. Yeah, um, I mean, it was quite a good result. Uh, they've been averaging 13.5% growth per annum in earnings over the last uh, roughly 10 years. And this was 16.8%. So that's uh, particularly good. They've got high return on equity, they've got very low debt, and the earnings are growing. So it's a company that has passed our filters in Team Invest for many years. Yet despite that, Andrew, the interesting thing is our members never ever look at it in depth, and I don't think more than maybe a half a dozen of our 600 members would own it. Is that, is that ESG concerns? Yeah, largely that members say, if you're going to be putting money into a company, you want it to be a business that you'd like the, to be more of. And would we really like there to be more pokey machines and so on? And most of our members say, nah, not really. Yeah. And you only want about 20 companies in your portfolio anyway, maybe 25 if you're being very conservative. Um, so when you consider that somewhere around 60 odd companies uh, pass our filters, um, people tend to be choosy about the ones that they want for their portfolio. And aristocrat leisure is not one that our, our members uh, ever bother talking about. So every time it comes up, if somebody does suggest it um, for a more detailed discussion in what we call a smart, the rest of the room almost immediately says, nah, it's gambling, forget it. Yeah. So a no from us, but it's on a quite low PE. I mean, it's on an 18 odd PE, a little bit more today because the share price just gone up, so pro probably a bit over 20. But uh, uh, all the numbers look good, but Certainly, team invest members don't get enthused about it. Your own concerns and, and uh, strategy aside, if you were in it as mm. a shareholder, would you sell it then at this point? Well, if, if ESG, do, the, the side of ESG uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's everything else. Yeah. But if gambling bothers you, then you'd sell it. Yeah. If gambling doesn't bother you, then why sell it? And in fact, the interesting thing is it may even be immune to a downturn in the economy because historically, if you go all the way back to Great Depression and earlier, um, gambling has done very well 
when times have been tough. Uh, in fact, gambling has boomed That's whenever true. there's been a recession. Yeah. So it may even do well then, but I don't hold it and uh, none of our funds in the group hold it um, for the reasons that it's a gambling stock. All right, that is our stock of the day, Aristocrat Leisure, which, uh, well, as we pointed to, doing very well on the market today.